This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are serious about achieving your most important goals and you are looking for a proven system to unleash your true potential, boost your performance and catapult your results, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us the system that has helped dozens of people to go beyond their comfort zones and achieve goals they could have only dreamed of before. We have a rock star guest joining us today. I'm talking about an elite performer, both in business and sports. His name is Art Turok. He has delivered speeches for 125 Fortune 500 companies, and he's the author of four books, including Invent Business Opportunities No One Else Can Imagine and Competent Is Not An Option. Since 2016, Art has orchestrated the Extraordinary Freedom Experiment to empower a select group of high achievers to demolish their comfort zones in order to accomplish their heartfelt goals and express their full performance capacity. Hey, Art, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And the only thing I would add is that I am a pentathlete in master's track and have won medals at national meets of the USA track and field. So that fills in the dimension of athlete and business professional. Awesome. Awesome. That's, that's really great achievement. And I, I think, you know, sports are really, you know, the, um, the counterparts of business, you know, in, in, in real life, it's, it's like, uh, business and sports are really uh, very much alike because, uh, you know, it's all about, you know, pushing yourself to, to achieve more. Right. So that's why, you know, a lot of, uh, successful business person also are successful in, uh, in sports. Right. Uh, great job on that. So, guys, I'd like to remind you that, you know, uh, every once in a while here in this podcast, I like to bring people who are not in the Amazon space in itself, because uh, I think us as entrepreneurs, we always need to improve ourselves as a as a person. Right. So uh, I'd love to to chat with Art because uh, he, he's a he's a master in uh, personal development. And he has developed this system that we're going to talk about today to demolish our comfort zone. So, Art, uh, that's that's actually you know my first question for you. Like your job title is comfort zone demolition expert, which is something you know um, we probably never heard of. So, uh, tell us what is what do you mean by comfort zone demolition? Okay, well, a comfort zone is a psychological state where you are dealing with familiar circumstances. Your uh, performance results are consistent with what you've done in the past. And you're working within a limited range of familiar behaviors. You're also emotionally feeling no anxiety. And <laughs> it is the place of comfort, comfort zone. Comfort zone demolition is an abrupt alteration of your decision-making criteria. Instead of, as we often do, unconsciously favoring what will bring me immediate guaranteed comfort, the demolition means, whoa, <laughs> wake up, pal. You're not going to deliver a vital result that matters to you tremendously if you keep choosing comfort and staying in this zone. You must demolish it. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So I'm curious to ask you then how this ties with accountability, because that's what basically most of your of your um, uh, work is in. Um, how 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 these two ties together? Sure. Well, accountability is taking the position. I am responsible for my effective and ineffective choices and ultimately how my life turns out. So when you take accountability, there are four factors in to keep in mind. Number one, your mindset. That's how you interpret circumstances. Does this look uncomfortable? Does this look comfortable? A whole array of interpretations that you might have, your mindset. Then what comes right from mindset is choice, action or behavior, and results. So I'm saying 
extreme accountability, you take accountability for all of those four factors. You operate also with the aim of zero tolerance for blaming, excuses, complaints, zero tolerance. As soon as you see yourself doing that, bam, shift right into taking accountability. So in summary, you can't blame uncomfortable risks and effort. No, you don't give yourself that license. You must take accountability. If you're going after results, do what's required. And what's often required is demolishing a comfort zone so you do the behaviors that deliver results. I see. That's interesting. I'm curious about, you know, because I, I do lots of meditation, so I'm very uh, familiar with the concept of uh, being aware of your of your behavior, being aware of uh, your, your mindset and status, right? So, but I, I see talking with other people that th that's not the case for many of them. Uh, so in like in what you said right now, like zero tolerance for excuses and uh, um, right justifications, like how do we find ourselves in that like uh, find finding ourselves when we when we're doing a uh, ex when we are making excuses? Um, is do, do you have any uh, ways that you know uh, on how to actually uh, yes. find yes. ourselves? Yes. Uh, you're talking to someone who went wild <laughs> about five or six years ago. I decided to keep a list of victim language. When I say victim language, I mean excuses, blames, complaints. That list grew and grew and grew because people speak it and write it. It's saturated into most of our cultures. And the list kept growing to the point where <laughs> it's now 40 pages in length. There's about 10,000 items on it. Wow. My list of occasions for extreme accountability, on the other hand, only has 200 items on it. Yeah. So you, you understand what, what the environment is that you and I, most of your listeners, walk into. So here's how you get razor sharp at it. I looked at the list of 10,000 and said there are four major categories that we blame that become excuses. One is our feelings. Do I feel up to it? Am I emotionally ready? Am I feeling confident? Am I freaked out? We check our feelings as a source of motivation. We also check our circumstances. Are they favorable or unfavorable? We also check our past history. Is the result I'm looking at today consistent, pretty close to, approximate what I've done in the past? If not, I'm not sure I can produce that breakthrough. And then finally, identity. We all have a sense of the talents, abilities we have, and the type of person we are. <laughs> and if we're asked to do something that doesn't seem to fit that view of ourselves, we're done. So to your listeners, look for yourself in your feelings, your circumstances, your past history, and your identity. And that's where you're going to see the traps that create comfort zones and rob you of your full capacity. Wow, wow, that's that's really gold. Thank you, Art, for that. I mean, I, it's something you, we spoke about in the in our pre-interview chat, and it's something I really loved. So I wanted to ask you to share it with people because uh, I think this these four areas uh, gives much more clarity to people on how to identify their they're uh where, where they are making excuses or or uh complaints or or uh blaming other people so these four areas are, are really like very very important for us to to grow personally and spiritually uh just to to say that them again feelings circumstances past history and identity guys keep this four in mind take notes pause this recording and uh, uh, take a note of those four uh so we spoke about victim language right so language is a big part of um uh, demolishing our comfort zone and uh, uh uh being accountable of of our action so uh, my next question for you is that you you're saying in your in your practice guide which we're going actually to share with people here uh, guys, remember that in every episode, we always share some complementary material. You can find the one uh, uh, that Art is sharing with us today in uh, in the um, 
show notes of the episode at thesellerprocess.com and you will find the link there or in the description of the YouTube video. So in this practice guide, you will find lots of uh, very interesting information about what we're talking about. And one interesting piece of that says, stop holding people accountable, right? So I just, uh, I think that piece, it's very interesting to, to discuss about what do you mean by that? Yeah, please. <laughs> you, you can't, you can't hold someone accountable. <laughs> we use that term, but really all we can do is invite someone to take accountability. They need to choose to take accountability. So accountability on demand is a fallacy. And yet you see all kinds of attempts to hold people accountable. Now, it's not as blunt as saying, Gian Marco, you must be accountable for this and telling them how to be accountable, what they're accountable for. But what managers do typically in most organizations is they'll ask questions. Now, listen to these questions. What caused you to miss the deadline? What happened that prevented you from achieving your goal? Why didn't the results we planned for get done? Do you hear what those questions lead you? To creating stories, blames, justifications. So in the name of holding people accountable, we're asking what I call blaming enhancement question. <laughs> Good wow. luck trying to hold people accountable with that approach. Wow. So what's the, what's the solution then? How do we go from like this ordinary way to see accountability to, to uh, let's define another way, the new way to, to, uh, for, for accountability? Let's talk about conditions first. Ordinary accountability is always after the fact. So a performance has been completed. So in business performance reviews, in the military after action reviews, schools, exam periods, after the fact. Extreme accountability can be proactive. You're thinking about potential problems. You're looking at how do I get even better than I am today? and you're, you're launching yourself to be maximally effective. So, for instance, being proactive. An entrepreneur might say, okay, for me to achieve the results I want, there are some vital skills that I myself need to master. I can't delegate these. What are those vital skills? I'm going to spend the time and money to develop them. That's being proactive. Another example of being proactive. <laughs> Before this call, couple of days in advance, after our rehearsal conversation, I said, look, I'm going to put together the questions that I think would be terrific. Now, who, who as a guest, would think to submit questions to a podcast host? I do because I'm proactive. I even time my answers with a stopwatch. So that's extreme accountability. There's another piece to extreme accountability that I must share with your audience, and that is Ordinary accountability tolerates blaming even when it comes to important vital goals. So you're sitting in with someone and you hear them uh, talking about all the difficulty they have staying on a diet or getting to the gym and they're growing heavier and heavier and unhealthy and you don't say anything that would bring that up for help in coaching. You might even encourage it and chime in and have a pity party. Extreme accountability, no. <laughs> Cut people no slack, especially the people you care about and love. You want to be able to disturb their mindset if it's off in that direction. And so what you often need to do is be able to um, ask them questions, offer coaching, that disturbs the way they're thinking. You care that much about them. You are not going to enable them to continue to be in an ineffective mode of choosing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this brings me so many questions. <laughs> yes. Now, okay. You, you know, wow. What did what did wow mean? What is it? Well, you said wow. How did how did that impact you? What I said. I'm curious. Oh, well, uh, it's it's just a distinction between like, I, I think it's so true that when you're when you're, uh, you know, uh, 
trying to find, you know, uh, what's the reason why these people are uh, were not accountable, then you know they they actually you, you are giving them the right uh, uh, the arguments to to start creating excuses. So yeah. I mean, this, this is actually this is so true, and actually it's it's making me think that it's all wrong, you know, the way like managers uh take a account accountable uh keep, keep our our team accountable it's like we're doing it wrong right so yeah. uh, we need to rethink that accountability piece and uh, move move more toward uh, this vision of extreme accountability which is being proactive as you just mentioned so i'd like to go deeper into that because that's the the core of the of the system that uh, you developed it's about asking this these six questions that you, you guys will will just cover now, but you will find in more details in the practice guide that uh, Art is sharing with us. So let's dive deeper into these six questions because these is our this is the most powerful piece of the of the puzzle. So what are these six questions? Yes, uh, let me talk about them as six categories of questions. Each category may have a couple of questions in them. So I'll start with the results discrepancy question. And that is looking at the gap between the desired results and your actual results at any point in time. So the questions could be, what results, and results are typically behaviors, some measurable metric, or a project completed tangibly. What results are you committed to accomplishing? And then the follow-up question is, what progress have you made on those results so far? And then look at the gap. Second question category is looking at self justification, undermining behaviors. Sorry, undermining behaviors. And you start looking at what are you doing that's ineffective and what are you avoiding doing? So the questions flow listen, what actions do you choose to take that are ineffective to getting the results you desire? Key word is choose. Next. What actions do you choose to avoid that undermine your ability to produce the results that matter? Again, the word choose saturates these questions. Third is the self-justification questions. And that is the blames, the excuses we tolerate. And there are, is a great question for that. What justifications do you choose to accept? as a valid reason for lack of results. Do you keep hearing me use the word choose over and over again? To make that point, you're accountable for your choices, for better or for worse. And there's another great question there. What are the worries if you actually were successful, if you did what you know you need to do and succeed, what worries do you have? Fascinating how people worry about success and that could stop them. Now, the fourth area is looking at the colossal deception. Now, the colossal deception, Jean Marco, is the greatest mental trickery and mindset problem of human beings. The colossal deception, what it literally means is we often unknowingly, unconsciously focus on how do I Stay comfortable. Short term, immediate, guaranteed comfort becomes the priority. And what we deceive ourselves is oh, nothing big is going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to have any problem with my long term results. Uh, maybe a delay. I'll get around to it eventually, someday. And unfortunately, the colossal deception can last years and decades. And you realize. <laughs> What might have been a neat goal was really a pipe dream. So you, we, we, in my questioning, we look at the colossal deception. Good example, before I even give the questions. Think of an entrepreneur who knows he or she needs to go out and get financial backing, get loans, right? And instead, that's risky. <laughs> what they focus on is I'll improve my business plan. Now, for a month or so, that makes sense. 
But when it goes on for a year and they keep improving the business plan and haven't sought out financial backing, that's the colossal deception. So you need to start asking questions like, what are the short-term payoffs you gain by staying comfortable? What are the long-term costs and regrets that's coming next? But you want to start looking at the gains. And then the jigs up question is when you start facing ruthless honesty. You start looking now at the long-term price you're paying. And that's where you begin to hone in and say, okay, what are, if nothing changes, what are the regrets you're going to have down the road? You're also asking, what are the payoffs you accept that are going to ensure that you do not make the progress you desire? And so it's those questions that really now juxtapose, okay, I've looked at the short-term payoffs. I've looked at the long-term costs in terms of results. Choose. And that's the, the point of no return. You literally find out are you truly committed or are you just interested? If you're willing to play comfort, you're just interested. If you say, no, I'm willing to do what's required, what is necessity, that's commitment, which then leads to the final question. And that is the do what's required question. Perfect place to finish. This is a series of questions that allow you to do some immediate problem solving that allow you to anticipate problems that will come up when you're successful. So it's a series of six questions, actually, that really set you up to begin. What's your first step to begin new habits? Questions like that that really are at the heart of moving into action. So that's the flow of these questions. Wow, I re I really really love them, and <laughs> I was not stopping, you know, to to take notes here. I took so many notes. I, I think some of these questions are super super powerful. Um, I'd love to hear from you, like how uh, do you use this in uh, with uh, with a company with, with groups of people? Uh, can you give us some like, uh, for example, case studies or something, some some example that this yeah. uh, questions um helps, yeah, exactly you know, so if, I, if i'm working with a fortune 500 company or any company brings me in i'm working with their senior management team uh what we typically do is we have them pair up to coach each other their accountability partners for each other and the managers then do the coaching and use these six questions these exact six questions periodically i'll be on the calls with them and being able to offer coaching to the pair so that's typically how it's done. We also have reporting of the entire group. So everybody knows that it's going to be a public description of what results they produce or fail to produce. And at the very outset, we call it mission unreasonable projects because we're telling them you're going after breakthroughs here and it's going to require you to demolish comfort zones and be, quote, unreasonable with your typical amount of effort or risk. So it's all set up, customized to really require comfort zone demolition and using these tools. Mm, I see. I see. So do you have any suggestions on like when to use them? Like, uh, uh, should we should we run through these questions, for example, like on a, I don't know, on a weekly basis or or, you know, whenever there is a, some trigger yeah. in our lives? And uh, how do we use this like with ourselves and also with other team? Because it, it, it's, it's something like, it's a great opportunity to bring them up with our team members as well. Uh, obviously, because we're talking about accountability in a, in a company setting, but also obviously they're, they're super helpful for ourselves first as, as the business owners, right? So yeah. how, how do we use these questions? Yeah. At Your the question's very clear. So you wanna look particularly Ideal times, beginning of the year when you're first setting major goals or quarterly, if that's your practice, where you're, look, you know, you might be setting stretch goals. And if you do, you're definitely going to have comfort zones to demolish. This would be a great place to use the six questions. In addition, when you do performance reviews, whether it's done quarterly, weekly, monthly, these questions are perfect. 
And then the third great area is when you acknowledge to yourself, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not moving. I can see this comfort zone has a hold on me. I'm not taking the actions that I said are needed and required. I need to pull out these questions spontaneously right now and use them. Okay. I do. Makes sense. So would you suggest, this is a very practical question I just came up with, like, I, would you um, send them to, it, regarding with, uh, you know, um, talking with our, with our team members, would you send them in writing, like, for example, like I, with an email, uh, asking our team members to reply to these questions and, you know, kind of asking them to, to have this kind of self, um, self judgment type of, uh, uh, exercise, or would you like set up a face-to-face -face meeting and ask them directly? So they, they're not prepared uh, for, for that. And they just maybe, you know, answer like uh, on their feet. I always believe in the tell, show, do method. So I want to teach the method verbally. So for instance, with, with one of my clients, we did a Zoom meeting and I explained the question and the usage of the questions. We did some role plays, the show, and we did some practice. And then the do is they, after, after modeling it, they went out and started practicing and we had uh, conversations to follow up to be sure of their excellence in execution. Now, okay. let me also make one other example that is the use of spontaneous coaching. So for instance, this would be an example of extreme accountability. I'm on a plane and I'm seated with a colonel in the army and his wife. We're having a terrific conversation on the plane. We've just met, we're seatmates. And I'm telling them about my book, Competent is Not an Option. And they're having a great time. And he's telling me about his stories from West Point. And about 45 minutes into this conversation, the colonel says, I'm not very creative. <laughs> I took a deep breath and I said, sir, mm -hmm. former airman, Art Turok, reporting for duty, sir, I wish to offer powerful coaching to you. He starts cracking up. And I pick up a red flag, which is just like in, in football, a coach can throw a flag on the field to redo a referee's decision. I wanted to redo his conversation with him. So I said to him, Sir, I tossed the red flag at him. I said, sir, you just said identity. Your identity as I'm not a very creative person. Think a more powerful way of doing that so it doesn't sound like you're genetically deficient and really stuck might be, hmm. In the past, when I've had creative projects, my results haven't measured up to my expectation. And yeah. he started to smile. And so we then, that was the opening, totally met just that day. And we did a little bit of coaching using these questions and we have become very close friends. He became a member of my Intrepid Freedom Crusaders and we are continually communicating. Uh, it's exciting. He's also become a general now. And by the way, his innovative projects on the base blew me away. So wow. that, that's a spontaneous conversation. When you get proficient with these questions, when you understand and know how to listen for excuses and justifications and victim language, you become very spontaneous and your range of opportunities expands. Wow. Yeah, I think these are really, really powerful. Yeah, I'd love now to really go in depth on that you know i'm going to re uh, read them you know through this uh through the the practice guide that you you're sharing with us so guys remember you can download this guide with all these questions and you know more uh it's uh, i think it's like 30 pages or something i mean it's mm -hmm. it's a uh, full of content that you guys can uh, um you, you can you can get much more insights from uh, if you if you want to learn more from this conversation, 
Uh, you can download that in the in the show notes of this episode at thesellerprocess.com or you will find it in the YouTube description. All right, I have the last question for you because I think uh, you know you you've delivered some really really valuable gold nuggets, and I'd like to you know to end this conversation with our signature question, which is what is your best advice to achieve more with less when it comes to achieving our heartfelt goals? Well, when I think of more with less, and I didn't know that that was a repetitive question. Heartfelt goals are, by definition, uncomfortable. Part of the reason they're so gratifying is because it does take effort. And there's a sense of accomplishment, of a bold ambition. Now, the thing to do, I'm going to give people four steps. And what the steps are is, one, decide an uncomfortable task that you want to pursue because it serves one of your vital goals. Write that down. Second, write down the excuse or justification or rationalization or blame that you will use perhaps later in the day, maybe a few hours from now or minutes from now, that you're likely to use. You know yourself, you're going to be able to write that down. Third, say to yourself and write this down as well, what is my passionate values that are served when I deliver on my commitment? So, for instance, my passion of values would be freedom, courage, extraordinary. And I look to see how that ties in to the task, that uncomfortable task that I wrote down earlier. And then finally, okay, take accountability. Write down, what am I going to do now? Whatever little excuses are flirting in my head, I've decided my commitment is solid and this is the action I'm going to take. So this is like a comfort zone demolition rehearsal before the actual moment of performance occurs. This is so beautiful. You start doing this over and over again, you become masterful. It takes five to seven minutes to write down those comments. And then all of a sudden you become adept and you start demolishing comfort zone one by one. And you are freed up to perform in areas where you used to be totally chained in, boxed in, and inflicting limitations on yourself. You know, years ago, I used to say, Art, you don't have the brain power to organize a full book. You could organize a blog. You could organize an article. But a full book? You don't have the brain power. Wrong. (laughs) Totally wrong. I blew that sucker away and started practicing this method. And I have had absolute joy in writing my new book, which includes six practices for achieving your heartfelt yet uncomfortable goals. And literally wrote the book in a matter of months and organized it without using a developmental editor. This is the joy of comfort zone demolition. You develop capacity that you've been robbing yourself, expressing that book would never have looked, turned out the way it is, the power it is without me getting a deeper understanding of the material by going through this kind of it. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I really, really appreciate like the way you are so passionate about what you're talking. And I, I can really feel that you, you're, it's your life, it's your passion. So you're, you're really sharing a, a very valuable insights with people. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. I'm sure people who are listening uh, are uh, amazed of, uh, about some of this, uh, of the content that you just shared. So uh, tell, tell them how they can reach out to you and what can you do for them in case they're interested in working more or le- learning more about you. Yes, great. Well, the uh, website homepage is a great place to go. And it's my name, Art Turok, that's T-U and then Rock, R-O-C-K dot com. <laughs> Simple. Go to that page. You'll then be able to download the Extreme Accountability Six Questions to Transform Your Life. That's the PDF. In addition, I'll be beginning a new blog. You'll be able to get the blog on a weekly basis. And in addition, periodically, I'm going to hold online Zoom meetings 
on Comfort Zone Demolition. You'll be a guest for those sessions as well. You can join us and we'll be using and practicing with these tools and additional tools that we haven't covered in this interaction. Wow, that's that's awesome. So guys, take advantage of that. Uh, you will find the link in our show notes or YouTube description. Uh, remember, the key to success is to emulate the best. So take home the advice and tips and questions that Art just shared with you and and start using them in your business because you will find uh, you, you will be enriched by by these questions and you will find yourself demolishing your comfort zones. Thanks to Art, uh, super powerful questions. Thank you, Art, again, for joining this, this conversation. I hope to see you again. Maybe we can have another conversation down the road. My pleasure to contribute to your listeners. Have a good day, guys. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook, where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you. And leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.